Hi everyone, it's the tiniest one back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the NZXT H510 Elite. Now there are a couple of different versions of this. The Elite is the one with the AR AER fans in the front and the glass panel, and you can also get the H510i, which is $60 cheaper at just $109 because this version that we're showing today is $169 but it does come with uh, the front panel isn't glass and it's just metal and you do just get normal fans in it but you do still get the light on the inside which we'll see me talk about in a little bit so quite a price difference between the two we're going to be taking a look at the more expensive one today <laughs> So, as I said in the introduction, there are a couple of differences of these cases going to be available. When I am filming this, this is before the official kind of release for sale and all that kind of stuff. So there aren't any uh, e-tailer links for me to get uh, direct prices from. So all I've got is the information that NZXT has given me, and that is the Elite that I'm reviewing today is going to be $169. It does come with a couple of 140mm AER RGB addressable fans in it and there's a uh, lighting strip on this side and you get the tempered glass front. The normal H510i, that has an all metal front, non-RGB fans, but you do still get the light and that's only $109. Now I'm, I am going to do a full review, give you a good look round and everything like that. You're going to see more of my ugly mug as well. But I just wanted to speak to you about the prices and the differences between them first. They should, should perform thermally roughly the same. I know, uh, so you are going to see the graphs and I have just put 510. So we're going to assume that they are going to just perform you know, roughly or thereabouts roughly the same. And you are going to want to see the thermal results as well. Um, uh, and yes, let's move on to the way we normally do our reviews without half of me and my big belly in it. So we always start at the top and at the front, but we've tipped the case over. So this is the roof panel. And down there, you can see that you have a power switch, there's no reset switch. You do get a USB Type-C cable though, which is quite nice. You also do get a, an internal USB 3.1 Gen 2, and then you have a combo port for your headphone and your microphone. The uh, surprising thing, especially at this price point, is the fact there is just a single fan in the roof. It's quite a basic grill, I personally think as well. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure for um, even $109, let alone $169, that I would be happy with that level uh, of exhaust options and that sort of stuff to be available. Um, I definitely think that I personally want more than that at this kind of price point. And um, again, the, the, if you think about some of the cases that are available from the competition and stuff, you know, there, there, there are a lot more cases up with better options available. Um, so not a particularly great start. That front though is probably the reason why they've made these changes in the first place. The, uh, the, it does kind of, there is a seam because the side panel does come off, but once it's kind of on your desk, it does become fairly seamless. And the, the glass front panel, I personally would say, would be the only reason, at this present moment in time at least, that you would kind of want to go for the, the 510 uh, Elite. It is about the aesthetics and it does look really nice. The continuation of the lower metal panel here to flow round into the side, it does just give it a very sleek and kind of grown up feel. It's very minimalistic, it's very kind of modern looking. Um, but I'm already feeling like I'm breaking into a conclusion, so I'm gonna carry on with the review aspect, which is kind of round the back. Now, when you get round the back, I have to say, straight away, it feels cheap again. Single 120 millimeter RPM. There are no 140 millimeter options. There's no adjustable options. There's nothing particularly special going on around here. You do have a couple of mounts here to be able to put a vertical GPU in, if you would like. But if I'm perfectly honest with you about it, moving the camera around, 
it's very, very close to the outside of the case. And if I'm honest, it's probably going to be too close to the case. There's going to be no uh, possibilities here for a lot of the larger cards. Most of the big, like big hitting graphics cards now are like a 2.5 slot. You're not going to be able to use that with this case. It's also just a normal seven slot round the back. You can see that the um, screws and everything all hang out round the back. To me, this feels like I'm reviewing one of the old H340 cases with a glass front panel on it. It's just really not making me think that this is a premium case, which with a $169 price tag, it is. When you go for the um, fan, in, uh, sorry, the filter in the bottom, it's got a decent size full length filter for your power supply and it kind of ticks the boxes. We move around to the back, you've got a couple of thumb screws which are attached so you're not going to lose them and then the side panel comes off and you can see that there is a dust filter down the edge because on the edge of the case that is where your intake for the front of the case is. There is no, there is a little tiny um, uh, intake on the bottom of the case at the front to give you that extra bit of airflow but as you can see when you scroll up it's just the window then and the gap for the fans and I'm not saying this is a particularly bad thing because it's it's all about the aesthetics really and it does give you the kind of feel of like the old H440 for example which had that side intake and uh, I, I don't particularly think of it as being a bad thing it like I said it's just about making the most of the the aesthetics there and if they had added dust filters down here and intakes down here it would have ruined the look of the case so I, I get why it's there then when we look up to the top, there is a controller there. That's where your LED controller is. You can plug fans into there to be controlled as well. You can also plug fans in here to have the, the, the fan speed controlled as well. Now with the aesthetic on the inside of the case, which is kind of normal for the NZXT cases now, being that white bar that comes down and across, what that does on the other side is cover up your fan speed, so apps uh, your fan speed, your CPSU cables. So that you've got a big area down here that you can work with your PSU cables, your SATA cables and all that sort of stuff and it kind of covers it up. And it does work really well and it's one of the aspects about the NZXT design I personally really like. You do get some uh, cable routing kind of channels around here that can make your life a lot easier. One of the things I would say about cable routing though is when it does come to the uh, eight pin up the side here, it is actually done quite well because you've got the routing at the top, but then you've also got cable tie down options in there as well. And the reason why I've not cable routed them in massively was just so I could literally show you about this as we were walking around it and working around it because otherwise I wouldn't be able to pull them out and show you where they were. Two uh, 2.5 inch hard drive mounts on the back, they're removable. You won't be able to show them off because there's no holes in the back of the panel. You'd have to mod that if you wanted to do it yourself. And then you do get uh, two 3.5 inch mounts down the bottom out the way. And you can't see those from the other side of the case either, which is actually really nice. Normally with manufacturers and power supply covers, you do get that kind of covered up. Limited for power supply cable room though, in reality you can get it in there if you're running a normal 160 millimeter long ATX spec power supply which the bulk of them are nowadays there's enough there but it's going to be difficult for you to get them incredibly tidy there's plenty of cable routing room at the top of the case but sadly with the top of the case as I've already shown you there's not really a massive amount of room up there for you to be able to well, you can't fit radiators and stuff other than a single 120 or 140. And normally we'd get excited about this much cable routing room because you would have like a RAD in the roof or an AIO in the roof or something like that. And because of the fan configuration, your only option for AIOs in this is a, a dual 140, dual 120 or single 140 or single 120 in the front. Um, I don't particularly think that the single fan AIOs for a case of this size should be being used on the CPU. So it's a 240 or a 280 in the front for your CPU. Excuse me. And then if you're going to use an AIO for your 
GPU, you're looking at that going uh, in the roof, but that's where the bulk of the heat's gonna be coming from most of the time anyway. So that might not necessarily be such a bad thing. Onto the uh, side panel. There's a very heavy tint to this side panel. And it does hide a lot of the components that are on the inside, although you can still pick up the white accent down here. Now, it's not actually a massive, massive case. And that's another reason why it kind of makes you think that it's you know less expensive than it is. GPU-wise, though, you can still get a healthy 350 millimetre long GPU in there if you wanted. If you were going to go AIO in the front, though, you'd obviously have to lose 25 mil of that. So you're safely looking at kind of 310 to 325 ish GPU length with your uh, AIO in the front. Pretty much the bulk of graphics cards that are available on the market today will be able to fit into that nice and easy and still get an AIO in the front. And the, with the majority of cases, you could go push pull as well. There's actually a perforated power supply cover on this side, which you can't remove or anything because this side panel is completely fixed as well. Um, and it's all perforated, but there isn't an active fan in the front at all because there's only two fans in the front and they're fixed in the upper chamber but your power supply shouldn't have any issues and the reason why it's filtered all the way along i'm going to assume is to keep the aesthetic nice rather than it only being in one section which i like and it also does mean that you can have your power supply either way around because it doesn't matter whether you're having it drawing in from the outside or the inside because the most of power supplies nowadays hardly spin the fans up anyway because they're quite efficient so uh, the whole has to be face down thing is something that I've been saying about for years, it doesn't particularly matter. Beyond that, for a basic ATX system, it's a basic ATX case. You've seen the fan in the roof. I've said to you about, I don't think there's enough room for the majority of the larger um, GPUs to go down the side. Uh, I'm not gonna say that the case can't support it at all because I would just buy an adapter that went down the normal expansion slots down the back, like the one that Cooler Master and CableMod make, for example. I do think that the GPU would be a little bit too close to the side panel on this side unless you were water cooling. Problem is with water cooling, because you've only really got the two fan slots in the front and the single teeny tiny one in the roof, I wouldn't particularly say it's even water cooling friendly. Uh, AIO friendly for dual fans, yes, but nothing above, which is a shame because a lot of us do like to have bigger AIOs, but yeah. So the layout beyond that is pretty good. You've got some grommets at the back to be able to put like your front panel headers through and stuff like that. But other than that, it's a pretty standard generic feeling layout. Okay, so conclusion time. And we also get to talk about the thermals as well because I haven't shown you any of the graphs or anything yet. Now at 600 RPM, it didn't do too well. And just so you know, I'll, I'll splash the screen specs up or the specs up real quick, just so that you can see how we test. And the CPU and the GPU uh, fans are fixed, as you can see. And then it's just the case fans that uh, get altered. So 600 RPM, it didn't do very well. It's very warm. And well, what we do is we sort the same data between CPU and GPU so that it, you can actually get a feel to see which one's gonna be you know, working better and which one's not necessarily gonna be doing so great. And I would say that with this, as you can see, that you had one that was pretty much in the second place all the time and then the other one was in the third place all the time. And I would suggest now uh, that it, it hasn't done too well, but the H has always been about, the H is meant to stand for hush and it's meant to be quiet. I was actually a very big fan of the H440, whereas a lot of people thought that it was too hot. I liked the aesthetic on it, I saw possibilities with it. It also meant that you could put like a big AIO in it or lots of hard drives. It actually had quite a lot of options and I ended up doing quite a lot of work with that case. I even ended up completely redoing the inside and like putting a big panel window on it, you know, back before when we were getting like full side panel windows and stuff like that. So. With the actual range themselves, I've normally been a fan, but this one, it, it, it is very aesthetics focused. But the problem is with the price, I just think that it's a little bit too expensive for that aesthetic focusedness because there's not enough ways for you to be able to work around the fact that it's designed to be quiet. 
Now, normally with the H, you had like sound deadening materials and you, you know, it was genuinely designed to be a quiet case. Whereas this is kind of blurring the lines between that quiet case aspect and aesthetics. And if I'm completely honest with you, I'm not entirely sure about it. I really do like the glass front panel and I like, and I understand why this is all kind of, uh, has been kept very minimalist and you only have those intakes on the other side. But the problem is, is then you've got no option for a 360 at all. I genuinely, genuinely think what they needed to do would be to have had a 240 stroke, 280 millimeter offset fan mount in the roof. So you can have a decent AIO in there as well as having some good airflow fans going on as well. Because the airflow in it is limited you know, it, it, I genuinely thought with this case, if you were to take the glass panel away, it just felt like I was reviewing the old H340. Just don't think it's really worth that much money, which is a big thing. So what it all comes down to is it looks great, but the reality of living with it, building with it, having to use it, and what you can do with it is actually quite limited for the price. And it's just a little bit too expensive for what you end up getting. Thank <laughs> you.